We got a good one this morning. A good one. I don't know if I've ever told you this. There are three types of falls. They all end with the same result though, on the ground. So I was doing a little research and I came across, uh, uh, somebody was describing a fall. And I thought, wow, I don't know that I've ever categorized falls other than the fact that it's an unintended fall. And we all know that unintended falls are the single most, uh, lead, are the leading cause of injury to seniors, 65 and older. So what are the three types of falls? Have you ever thought about that? I've never even thought about it. I just thought, oh, that's a fall. Who cares what category it's in? You fell, we need to fix it, right? We need to prevent that from happening again. Three types of falls. Physiological, right? And they're describing that as an anticipated fall, right? You know you're gonna fall. Physiological, which is an unanticipated fall. And then accidental, okay? And, and you could likely describe all these as accidental. But let's break this down. Let's get a little deeper here, all right? So we're going to understand the causes of these falls. Falls are classified in three types, physiological, anticipated. So these types of falls have risk factors, right? That's what sets this category apart, is, is what are the risk factors? And we talked about key indicators last week, right? And you can see these if you guys went out and about in everyday life. You kind of look around and observe people and see some of these indicators playing out in, these, in, in folks' lives. Uh, but these types of falls have risk factors or indicators that can be identified in advance. Things like neurological diseases, something we've talked a lot about, uh, things that uh, you should consider using a device like a walker, a cane, or a rollator. All right, these falls that occur in patients, clients who have risk factors for falls that can be identified in advance, such as mental status, right? Neurological diseases, depression, abnormal gait, okay, abnormal gait, and, and then also drop foot could be included in that, right? The inability to, to, to dorsiflex, uh, pull that foot back. Uh, frequent toileting needs. And this becomes an issue at night. Whenever you're getting up out of bed, you're dealing with that postural hypertension, right? You need to catch your breath, sit up in bed, stand up with your legs against, against the bed, right? Count to three and then proceed. Let your blood pressure equal out. Uh, and then, and then also high-risk medications at polypharmacy, right? So uh, we want to make sure that at night, going back to the toileting needs, at night you have the path cleared, especially now, Christmas time, right? Hanukkah, you have a lot of people coming and going at families' homes. You've got a lot of different celebrations happening. If you're staying in an unfamiliar place, it's worth taking the time to make sure the pathway from your bedroom to the restroom is clear. Um, funny story, at our house we have a life-size Santa Claus, or pretty, Santa Claus is about this tall. My, my wife loves Christmas, I love Christmas. Um, my parents came to stay with us over Thanksgiving. And so we already had some Christmas decorations out, this life-size Santa being one of them. And it just so happens as you walk out of my son's uh, room, this Santa Claus is sitting right here, a bit obscure, but in the shadow, you can tell it's a person. Well, my dad, first night, we wake up the next morning, and he said, you know, you, you almost gave me a heart attack. I'd come out of the room, and I thought there was a person standing right there. And I told him, I told him, Dad, don't freak out when you come out. This is the Santa Claus. I told him, if he denies it, I, that's not true. I told him, watch the Santa Claus. So... Anyhow, he, he, you know, he said, I, I almost didn't need to go to the restroom. I almost could have just turned around and went back out because I just about, you know, peed myself. <laughs> so, so these are anticipated falls. And, and when they use the word anticipated, you know the risk factors going into it. That's why they're anticipated, right? We're not talking about the act, action of a fall, riding a bike and you hit something and you know now you're going to fall. This is something where we can identify indicators and risk factors and we can anticipate the impacts of a fall. Okay. Two, we're talking about physiological, right? The unanticipated fall. These falls occur in adults with low fall risk. So pretty active individuals, 
But unexpected events such as seizures, strokes, could not be anticipated, right? Postal hypertension can cause this as well. We just talked about that in the previous category. So these occur in patients who otherwise they're low risk, but because of an event whose timing could not be anticipated, such as seizure, stroke, syncopal, syncopal is just fainting, right? Uh, and then that's where the postal hypertension can come in, diabetes, can cause you to faint, polypharmacy, different, different medications, maybe you're just taking new ones. Uh, so all these are under the physiological, okay? And then we have accidental, and these are in low risk patients as well, and, and this is due to an environmental hazard, right? Not clearing the pathway in an unfamiliar space when you're staying somewhere, right? So checklist, I have checklists on the website, you can go and download, that'll help actually fall proof your home to avoid these accidental falls. Um, it's, it's easier to make sure the path is lighted. We talked about that. All right. So there's your, there's your three categories and, and we can put all of those right and put them in a category called preventable. All right. Now I think the toughest one would be the first one we talked about when we were talking about the physiological, the, the anticipated fall, the risk factors. That would be the toughest one. But again, canes, walkers, rollators, put yourself in a, in a place to win.